Hello and welcome to the first of a series of video podcasts which I'm calling Too Young to Get Old. That's because about oh, almost 10 years ago now I wrote this book Too Young to Get Old which was a sort of guide to ageing differently from the way in which our parents did. Um, you could also say that the uh, series is all about keeping as young as possible for as long as possible which is what most of us want to do. So. Uh, first of all, let me introduce myself. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Christine Weber. I'm a writer, I'm a broadcaster, and I'm a psychotherapist, although I'm not actively practicing as a psychotherapist now, but I worked in Harley Street for 20 years. I've written a lot of books, uh, most of them conventionally published and non-fiction, uh, titles like Get the Happiness Habit and How to Mend a Broken Heart and Obviously Too Young to Get Old. But now I'm writing fiction, for midlife people because I'm finding midlife to older life, which is obviously the band I'm in, a rich scene um, for material because I think that we all thought that by this time in our lives we'd be settled, know exactly who we were, life would no longer be turbulent and all of those things and actually it turns out that quite the reverse is true. So, I've written some notes, but I'll probably deviate from them from time to time. The important thing for you to know is it's just, each one is just long enough for you to have a cup of coffee, about 10 minutes. And I'm not going to advise you exactly, and I'm certainly not going to tell you what to do. What I'm trying to do, I think, is to bring to your attention things that I've found helpful, both for myself and my friends and with my own patients, and uh, just give you a starting point perhaps for you to think, uh, you know, how can I stay as young as possible for as long as possible? One of the things I wanted to talk about most particularly is uh, a term called compressed morbidity. I'm rather surprised that this has not become something that trips off our lips uh, on a regular basis because when I first heard this term, which is before I even wrote that book, um, it just struck me as a really brilliant idea. So let me explain. I was invited to the launch of a new range of organic makeup uh, in Selfridges. I don't know why I was invited, because it was all beauty journalists there apart from me, but anyway, I went. And uh, as sometimes happens, you go to something with rather poor grace and it actually changes your life. Now they had a speaker there called Andrew Vile, who was a Harvard professor, and he was a, what I would call a proper doctor, but also a kind of complementary medicine guru. Andrew said that what we should be trying to aim for is a model of compressed morbidity, and he explained that a lot of older people now, and well, this was 10 years ago, but it's still true, um, have a prolonged old age. They feel old and they look old and they act old for a large proportion of their lives. They become more sedentary, more inactive, unbalanced, I don't mean mentally necessarily, but you know, they get doddery. And um, he said that there was absolutely no reason that we should age in that way and that what we should aim for is a prolonged midlife where we're vibrant, vital, doing stuff, having fun, being the people we've always been, a prolonged midlife, and then compress morbidity, that means the bit where you're going to die, compress morbidity of as short a time as possible, pop off, no care of home bills, uh, no, uh, uh, you know, sort of being a, a, a weighty responsibility for your family and, and that kind of thing. So, I thought this would be fantastic. This would be fantastic to achieve if one could achieve it. And I have actually tried to work on uh, achieving it myself um, uh, and encouraging other people to do the same thing. So I still regard myself, don't laugh, as in midlife, although I'm 72. And I think by most people's um, reckoning, that would be classed as old, but I don't class myself as old. And I know that very many people in their 70s and even older don't class themselves as old but they're still out there contributing doing lots of stuff and keeping as active as possible so how can we do it well 
The first thing to say is that there are no guarantees because let's face it, there are illnesses that come that are associated with aging and not necessarily associated with aging that just come out of the blue. I mean, I think of things like motor neuron disease, Parkinson's. As far as I know, there are no health messages I can give you that will prevent you having those things if that happens to you. But what we can try and do is prevent those things that are preventable. And I'm thinking here of some kinds of heart disease. I'm thinking here of um, diabetes type 2. I'm thinking here of, uh, to some extent, hip and knee replacements by you know being sensible and exercising. I'm thinking here of I increasing your mobility and not succumbing to arthritis that makes you quite immobile. And it's also true to say that many scientists and doctors now think that we can do our bit to try and prevent dementia. And also some, not all by any means, some forms of cancer. So how do we do it? Well, I think there are all these health messages out there about keeping active and about keeping our brains active and about eating as well as we can and keeping our weight down. We all know these messages, so I'm not going to go on and on about them here. Um, but what I am going to try and do just in this first uh, broadcast is to have a think about, apart from diet, exercise and everything, what are the small things you can do to help yourself feel as young as possible for as long as possible and to look it? So then it set me thinking, what is it when you look at a crowd of people that defines an older person for you? Well, it used to be grey hair and wrinkles, but, but very often people uh, well into what we used to call old age have very few wrinkles. After all, let's face it, you know you're getting old when you spend an absolute fortune on a jar of cream that promises you eternal life, but we've all done that. Um, we also have nice haircuts and a lot of us have our hair coloured, so it's not that. I think it's more how we disport ourselves, how we hold ourselves, our ability to balance and our ability to just move in a way that does not define us as old. So how can we do that? Well, I think the, the thing really is that we need to be taking our own weight for as long as possible. Possible. I see people who are perfectly able um, coming out of the cinema or going up the steps to the station or whatever and they're grabbing on the handrail. They're not just got their hand lightly on it, they're grabbing it. In other words, they're using it in a way to take their weight instead of just uh, taking their own weight and using it there for reassurance. And I think that's just one little thing that people can do for themselves. And I try and do that. I try also um, never to groan as I sit down or bend down or get up. And we just get into the habit of that, don't we? Oh, you know, is that helping me bend down? I don't think so. And yet it's a habit that we get into and it really is a bad habit because it just defines, defines us as being um, well, not exactly past our sell-by date, but getting on that way. So I'm going to stand up now because I want to show you a couple of things that you might want to try. Can I first of all say, though, I'm not here to tell you to take risks with your health and your safety. So um, if you know that you can't balance easily, or if you know that um, those days of, of standing on one foot or whatever have gone for you, then don't do this. Find other ways of, of um, trying to increase the strength in the areas that I'm talking about. But anyway, let's stand up. What we want to really concentrate on now are two areas of our body that really uh, need to be as strong as possible if we're to remain looking as young as possible. One of them is the core. Now, roughly speaking, uh, if you go to yoga or Pilates, you will know this, um, they talk all the time about pulling in from where your navel is. I think actually it's a slightly bigger area than this, but I'm no uh, expert in this particular area, so I'm just telling you what I do. But if you watch dancers, for example, they kind of pull in like that, and that gives them greater stability and balance. So this area is worth 
working on. And uh, I'm sure, as I say, if you already do some exercise classes, that you're well aware of the importance of the core. So that's one thing. And say you want to walk up steps and not rely on pulling yourself up uh, by the, you know, from the rail, I would say be aware of your core first. Just brace it and then put your hand lightly on the um, banister and then move. The next thing you really need to think about are your ankles because we don't think about them really usually until they go wrong. Um, so exercising ankles and you can do some of these things sitting down I think are very good because if you think about it you draw great strength um, from your feet and your ankles and that enables you to stand proud as it were. So think about your ankles, make them strong. Um, you can just twirl them which is a good thing to do. Only do this if you've got something to fall back on if you think you're in any way unstable, in fact don't do it if you think you're unstable, is just up and down on your toes and then rock back on your ankles and I'm going to hold on, as I think you should, this sort of thing. It just enables you to feel some strength in your ankle because we don't exercise them. Even if we do a lot of walking and everything, quite often our ankles can be quite rigid. And I think it's quite important to get your ankles moving and to know that they will support you come what may. And something I do, um, but this is just something I make myself do, and, and if you're younger than me, I'm sure you could possibly do it, and if you're a lot older then perhaps this is not one for you, but I just try wherever I can during the day to take my own weight where I can, rather than you know rely on something else propping me up. So what I do when I take my shoes off is I make myself stand up, I don't always untie them actually, and, and when I put them on I do it standing up. So, as I say, this is something I, I've acquired the ability to do. I didn't used to be able to do it. But I just think it's one of these things that you can do that might just help you to look as if you're quite sprightly and still fit. So, just a few little hints and tips there. You might not want to do them yourself or you may start yourself thinking in a different way about what you could do but all part of our bid to be as young as possible for as long as possible. See you next time.